esophageal sweep, AP view, and more when radiologists and SLPs disagree. Raise your hand if you're a medical SLP who does modified barium swallow studies and a radiologist has disagreed with you on any of the following. Esophageal sweep, AP view, frame rate or pulse rate, not ending the study as soon as the patient aspirates, going beyond five minutes of fluoroscopy time, you are not alone. I'm here to talk about three of the most common barriers between radiologists and SLPs and what you can do about it. You'll wanna stick around for number three. It's the most challenging barrier of them all. Let's dive in. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. AP view. AP view, anterior posterior view, allows for a full picture of the swallow. Not only that, it's a part of standardized MBS protocols such as the MBS IMP. A colleague recently shared a story about insisting that the radiologist allow for AP view, which actually revealed a stricture and narrowing of the esophagus. The radiologist was shocked by how much he was able to how much was able to be seen in this view, and it was so alarming that esophageal cancer ultimately ended up being detected because of this. A survey study done by Herman and colleagues in 2021 looked at the practice preferences between radiologists and SLPs when it came to modified barium swallow studies. They found that radiologists and SLPs pretty much disagreed on everything, with the exception of the idea that a standardized protocol for the MBSS should exist. When it came to whether or not AP view should be a standard component of the MBS, 69% of SLPs were strongly in favor, while only 32% of radiologists agreed. 27% of radiologists were actually strongly against including AP view as a standard procedure during the MBSS. Why? One thing SLPs are encouraged to do is to look from the radiologist's perspective. Radiologists may see this as time consuming for a procedure that provides really low reimbursement. They may also see that a separate test, the esophagram, utilizes AP view. This could be really redundant if we do it during the MBSS as well. Radiologists may also believe or understand that the lateral view gives us all the information we need for MBSS, which we know it doesn't. It's our duty as SLPs to educate the radiologists on what we're actually assessing during the MBSS and the purpose of the AP view. Next, we need to read what radiologists would read or know in their literature. While SLPs have the ASHA MBSS guidelines, radiologists have the American College of Radiologists MBSS guidelines or the ACR MBS guidelines. According to the ACR MBS guidelines, AP view may be useful to further evaluate an abnormality identified on the lateral projection. This is only somewhat helpful because they focus on whether or not something was identified in lateral projection before considering AP view. What does the research say? Both SLP and radiology research? There are actually articles published in radiology that discuss the importance of AP view during MBSS. Carucci and Turner identified how AP projection is ideal for detailed evaluation of the swallow and motility in a 2015 article published in Radiographics. Gates and colleagues also discussed how AP view allows us to assess symmetry of bolus transit and determine if asymmetric weakness is present during the MBS in a 2006 article in Radiographics. In a nutshell, two things you can do to close the AP gap with your radiologist include one, educate the radiologist on your protocol and the purpose of AP view, and two, Use the research to highlight the utility of AP view in MBSS. Ending the study as soon as a patient aspirates, yay or nay? Very early on in my career, I actually accompanied a family member to a swallow study, and I just assumed that every radiologist knew exactly how we like to perform video fluoroscopy. This family member unfortunately did start to aspirate and the radiologist completely stopped the study. 
The SLP was very angry because she wasn't able to figure out what had caused the aspiration or if the patient was able to manage it. I remember being shocked at how the radiologist just didn't seem to care that she was begging for more information. So yes, in short, did we find out that the patient was aspirating? Yup. Do we have any idea why or any idea how to treat my family member now? Nope. It was very discouraging because we weren't able to change his diet or make any modifications because we truly didn't know what was going on. It was really heartbreaking and quite frankly, a gigantic waste of time. I will add that recently we took my son for a swallow study and this radiologist had such a respectful relationship with the SLP and he just kept saying, whatever you need, just let me know if you need, if you need more. And it was so nice to see this interprofessional collaboration. Now, the same survey I mentioned earlier also found a significant difference in opinions between radiologists and SLPs on whether or not a study should end as soon as the patient aspirates. SLP strongly disagreed with this practice method, whereas more radiologists agreed with this method. Why might this be? Maybe the radiologist thinks presence of aspiration is the sole purpose of the test. Radiologists may not understand how we plan dysphagia therapy around MBSS findings, and a premature end to the study could really truly limit that. So what can we do? ACR MBSS guidelines actually don't indicate that the study should end as soon as a patient aspirates. According to the ACR MBS guidelines, if aspiration occurs, the patient's response to aspiration and ability to clear the aspirated materials and his or her response to protective and therapeutic maneuvers should be assessed wherever possible. This should be music to the medical SLP's ears. Their own MBS guidelines even encourage further assessment to protective and therapeutic maneuvers should be assessed. This is a great starting point to discuss this barrier with your radiologist. I'll be posting other videos just like this that you won't wanna miss. So make sure to hit that like or subscribe button or turn on the notification bell. Esophageal sweep. This tends to be one of the most common and challenging, if not the most common and challenging barrier between radiologists and SLPs. There are countless stories in the MedSLP collective of SLPs advocating for their radiologist to scan down so we can get a better view of the esophagus. Going back to the radiology SLP survey, the investigators found once again that radiologists and SLPs differed significantly in their opinion around whether or not esophageal sweep should be a part of standard practice during the MBSS. Putting ourselves back in the radiologist's shoes, why might this be? There's a separate test for that. The esophagram looks at the esophagus, so why look at the esophagus during the MBS? Billing concerns. Radiologists might be unsure of how to bill or if they should bill for an esophageal sweep during an MBS. Some radiologists lean on the fear that they might actually miss something during the esophageal sweep, like cancer, because an esophageal sweep is not a formal assessment. This could raise potential litigation concerns. It sounds counterintuitive that an esophageal screen could lead to missing something so it shouldn't be done, but it's an unfortunate reality in our healthcare system. So what does the ACR MBS guidelines state? Unfortunately, they are not in our favor. To quote, this practice parameter focuses on assessment of the pharynx. For evaluation of the esophagus, see the ACR practice parameter for the performance of esophagram and upper GI exams in adults. So what's an SLP to do? Let's look at the literature. Research exists, both in radiology and SLP publications, that show the importance of esophageal sweep in identifying the root cause of dysphagia improving GI referrals, and diagnosing more serious underlying disease in a timelier fashion. Two publications I recommend referring to and discussing with your radiologist are Comparison of Esophageal Screen Findings on Video Fluoroscopy with Full Esophagram Results by Allen and colleagues in Head and Neck and Visualizing the Esophagus During Modified Barium Swallow Studies, a Systematic Review by Reedy, Erber, and Bonilla in American Journal of Speech-Language Pathology. Check out the free MedSLP Collective Clipboard Kit for access to editorial-reviewed resources on other various conditions that we treat. 
To access that, head over to metaslpcollective.com forward slash enroll, where we also have a robust and vibrant community of SLPs and mentors to help you out with your toughest clinical cases. We'll stick that link in the description below as well.